everyone and welcome back and this is Mindy Egan for Honeybee Stamps and in today's video I'm going to be using the Toy Store House Builder to create Santa's Workshop. I love making shape cards and these make it so easy and so unique. First I'll show you some of the products that I'll be using. This is the Toy Store House Builder stamp set so it has a couple signs on here uh, and the toys and what you're also going to need is the original, original house builder die set. This is going to help create the base of the card. And honestly, it's a great staple to have when you have house builders. This is the toy store house builder die set. So this is uh, all the elements to create a toy store or Santa's workshop. And it also, I also have the coordinating dies for that stamp set on this whole sheet. This is a magnetic sheet, eight and a half by 11. And that's what I keep all of my house builder sets on. I also may be using the gingerbread house builder. Now you don't have to have this. I just happen to have it and liked a few elements off of it. So the first thing that you are going to need are two houses. These are our bases that we're gonna work from and it's die cut from this piece. One is going to be the front of your card. The other is going to be the back and inside of your card. You will also need to die cut out this skinny piece. This is what is going to attach these two pieces together to turn it into an actual card. I'm going to walk you through the pieces that I used and what the dies look like for the pieces that I die cut out. This is the roof off of the original house builder die set. And for my colors, I just Googled Santa's workshop. There were a lot of options and I went with a red and green theme. So this first piece for our entryway, here's a look at that die. I like to use my tweezers to pick them up off the magnetic sheet because sometimes they can kind of get under your fingernail. This is a die to create the sign that we're going to stamp the Santa's workshop on. Here is the top portion, and this is what that die looks like. I'll also be die cutting that twice so I can do a die cut inlay. Then we have our door, and here is a look at that one. Now this die actually cuts the frame, but I used it out of brown cardstock to do a die cut inlay for my door as well. So a lot of these pieces have multiple use to them. Here's our chimney, and that's just this little piece. It has kind of those embossed bricks on there. And then I also have the top of the chimney that I die cut from white cardstock, and that's just this little rectangle. So I like to kind of lay everything out to get the idea of where things are gonna go in the color pieces. This is our steps up to the doorway out of white cardstock. I really like the white against these dark Christmas colors. It just really makes it stand out. Now I also have that second banner that's gonna go behind our sentiment. And here I'm die cut inlaying on that top portion of my roof or the kind of that, is it like an awning? And I did, so I did one pass with white cardstock to get that outline. And then I did it again in red cardstock and then I'll die cut inlay those. Then we have our windows. And these actually, there's two windows in one piece. So I die cut those out of white cardstock. And now my doorway and that background banner piece, I'm gonna die cut from gold glitter cardstock. And then on the original house builder are these two like bushes that I'm gonna use as snow drifts. And then that other piece is gonna go on the top of my roof and that is from the gingerbread house set. So I die cut those out of white glitter cardstock. Now I had to change things up because I wanted to have kind of a brick look to my building. So I had to recut another piece in white and now I'm putting on a brick stencil. I'll link a couple variations that Honeybee Stamps carries and I'm ink blending on some barn door distress oxide ink. Depending how intricate your stencil is, you can spray the back of it with a pixie spray, which is just a really low tack adhesive and helps stick to the cardstock or you can tape it down to your surface. Before I start gluing anything, I want to add a couple elements off of the Toy Builder Toy Store House Builder stamp set. So I picked these two candy cane poles, the North Pole sign, of course, and this adorable little snowman. 
I am stamping them in Gina K Designs Obsidian Ink onto some smooth white cardstock. And then I'm going to use my Copic markers to do just a little bit of coloring. Now I did also have the Santa's workshop I wanted to stamp out real quick. So I just kind of prepped my stamp by stamping it a couple times on some scratch paper. And then just using a comfort block, I'm stamping that right onto that white banner piece. For the Copic coloring, I did the classic red and white for the candy cane pulls. I used two different colors of red for Copic markers. I have R59 and R46. You could use any coloring medium that you want. Colored pencils would probably work really well here too because it is kind of a small area to work with. Or you could, if you use your Copic markers, just do one color. I also used the reds on the snowman's hat and the scarves and on my North Pole sign. And then just I'll blend that out just a little bit. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of orange for my carrot. And I'll have some gray here. This is C2, just to add a little bit of dimension to those North Poles. Some yellow, which is Y19 and Y06 for the top of my North Pole sign. And for the sign, you could leave this white, but I wanted to add some brown to it. So I did E37, E35, and E33. And then just a dab of a B00 on my snowman. Then I'm going to line up the coordinating dies, hold them in place with some low tack tape, and run these through my die cut machine. Now I didn't see in the set where there was a die for the uh, poles here, the candy cane poles. So being it's a straight line that's pretty easy to cut out, I'm just going to use my scissors and cut right outside of those stamped lines. Then I can work on the assembly of my Santa's workshop. So I did switch between using a tape runner and some liquid glue depending on the area. If it was a really skinny area, I used the liquid glue. You can see this piece was a little longer. It's I think it's meant for the bottom of the roof, but I wanted it at the top so it made it look like snow on the top of the roof. And typically I will lay this out so I know exactly where everything is going to go and what needs to get glued down first. So I'm starting with this top piece on the roof, glued that down, and then I'm doing that die cut inlay with those red pieces, just using some liquid glue. I have the front of the doorway here, or the entryway is what I look at it as. And I'm just putting that right under that awning. And then adding my candy cane poles, and I kind of wish I would have waited a little bit to add these candy cane poles because I am going to do a die cut inlay in the inside of this entryway as well. And the candy cane poles were a little bit in my way, but I'll show you that in just a moment. For my windows, I wanted them to look like they were lit up. So I attached those to some yellow cardstock, and then I'm just going to trim right around that. And that'll just look like it's glowing in the inside. So next here is where I was adding in these inlay pieces. And I had die cut that kind of entryway out of red cardstock too. And I'm taking those other pieces and adding them in. This middle one was a little tricky. And I think it was just because my candy cane pulls were in my way. But I still was able to make it work. Then I can add my door. And I had die cut this um, kind of outline piece out of some gold glitter cardstock. And then added in my door. I had to have some sparkle in there. This is the back of my banner, so there is a die for this. I popped this up with some foam squares, and I'm going to add that right over that space here above the doorway. And on the sentiment, the Santa's workshop, I just added liquid glue. And you just want to make sure you hold it down for a few seconds or place something heavy on it to make sure it adheres really well to that glitter cardstock. Then adding my chimney, and I'll add my windows on each side. And then after my windows, I'll add my steps up to the doorway. Just add that with some liquid glue. And I'll be attaching my snow banks. Like I said, these snow banks, I believe were supposed to be bushes out of the original house builder set, but I thought they made really good piles of snow. So I'll add a couple to each side. And then the center one, I'm going to pop up with some foam squares and just kind of getting an idea where my snowman is gonna go. I also have my sign here. Now my sign is hanging off just a little bit. It still fits in my envelope, but I would suggest kind of keeping it more 
onto the front of the card so you don't run into that chance of having to snip anything off. I love how Honeybee Stamps has such a variety of different house builder sets and they do work well with the other ones. So like I said, I have some elements off of the regular house builder set that just you just need to look at it in a different way to make it work with your card. I'm adding a few foam squares to my snowman to pop it up just a little bit. And these do fit into an A2 size envelope, which is another amazing thing. Now, on that original house builder, I think is this, you could see off on the left is this itty bitty die. And there was a cute little door handle. So I die cut that from gold glitter cardstock and I'm adding that to my door. So it was just an itty bitty die. I almost lost it. And I thought it just added a nice element to my door. Now to assemble our card and turn this into a card, you're going to need that small piece that we die cut earlier. It has a score line in the middle. So I'm gonna take some thin score tape and I'm gonna run it along one of the edges and then I'll make sure to push down really well to have it adhere to the paper. Now this second piece, I should have waited to add the second piece. I actually don't need to add it right here and you'll see that in just a moment. So I do have an oops in here, but I make it work. So on one of these sides, I'm going to remove that release paper. This is going to attach, you can either put this in the inside of the card or the back of the card. I decided to have this flap on the back of the card. So I take that back panel and I'm gonna line that right up to that score line. So it's gonna keep the inside of my card pretty clean. Now you can notice here when I fold this over, that I didn't need to have that score tape on the other side of the flap. It needs to be on the outside of the flap. So hopefully my recipient doesn't remove that release paper. Otherwise they won't be able to open their card. So you're gonna take that score tape again and you're gonna add it to now this outside flap. So then I'll take my finger or a bone folder and just burnish that down really well. I can remove that release paper and I'm gonna fold this down just a little bit and I'm just gonna line up the front of my card with the inside of my card. So you wanna make sure that everything lines up and this is what's going to create that shape card. So after I have all the corners lined up, I can push down really well on everything to secure that in place and then we can open this up and this is going to be our card and you can stamp a sentiment in the inside. Now it does have the flap showing on that outer piece but that's okay, I'm good with that. Hopefully nobody looks at that. <laughs> Now I did decide to add a few other elements. So I did stamp the Santa's toy sack and color that in. And I also die cut out a wreath to decorate my door. And that will finish up my Santa's workshop shape card. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I think these are a lot of fun. I haven't honestly made one since last year and I really miss these because they're so cute and you have so many color possibilities and so many different elements that you can add to this to really customize it and make it your own. All of the supplies will be listed down below in the video description. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you again real soon.